viewers, thank you very much for tuning in to our channel on Facebook and also on YouTube. Today is our first transmission or streaming. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is George, and today I have two guests in the studio. And uh, they're going to help us talk about fatherhood, the importance of a father in a child's life. In the middle, we have Madam Teresa James. Uh, she is a local musician. She holds Bachelor of Science, and also she completed a business from RIT. She's a licensed nurse and also a native of Rochester. And far left, we have Mr. Getu Bisher, if I pronounce it right. <laughs> and right. She, uh, he works at the Catholic Family Center, and he's a, a manager for a refugee program. Uh, I guess welcome to the studio with mm -hmm. us. Thank you for and having us. Thank you very much. Today is our Father's Day. Yeah. And we want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, responsible fathers out there who are doing their good job. Today, um, our discussion is going to be on fatherhood, mm -hmm. the importance of a father mm -hmm. in a child's life. Yes. I know all of you are parents. Yes. yes. Yeah, so yeah. let's start from, Mom, can you tell us a little, a little bit about what do you think about the uh, uh, importance of a father in a I family? Fathers are very, very important in family. I believe that they are uh, the foundation. Uh, not only do they plant the seed, but they influence their child's life uh, up through adulthood, male and female. Uh, as a female, my father showed me what a real man was. He, had set, he set the example for me. He took time to play with us. He took time to teach me things about tools, like I know the difference between um, Allen wrench and different type of wrenches, and I can work on a car, and I can do stuff like that. So not only did he do that, but uh, he showed me love, you know. Um, we were a touchy family, so we, we, we hugged each other, we kissed each other on the back. So, um, and growing up into my adulthood, it was very important. He taught me lessons um, about not looking down on people. He taught me lessons about um, being honest. He taught me lessons that all I have is my word, that my word is my bond. He taught me um, just all kinds of things. And he wasn't a, a, a afraid to um, be sensitive, to show his emotions. Um, as a musician growing up, my father was very supportive of me, uh, not only in school and academic, but also, when I played recitals or played in church, he was always there. I oh, could great. always look at the audience and see my father. So my mother and my father, they stayed married. It wasn't always easy, you know, but they stayed married. And I believe it's very important, um, even young fathers who are not with their um, mother, their baby mother, as we like to say nowadays, you have to be a part, an active part, in your child's life. You have to, whether it be male or female. Uh, for my brother, it showed them how to be a man. And, and my brother has raised their children. And, and they all were successful. Um, both my brothers retired out of the service. And so I believe um, in raising their children and, and um, being a father, I think I almost guarantee that they got it from my father. Great. Uh, let's ask for mm -hmm. Mr. Bajan, what is What about your view? Uh, well, uh, uh, my father, uh, in particular, uh, is uh, just someone whom I consider uh, my rock yes. uh, under under God. Yes. Um, well, the uh, part of the mother is really tremendous and great mm -hmm. but for boys it tends to be the father that gives the lessons just how to uh, become a great person a great uh, father later so uh, I believe everything I do and I learn I got it from uh, my father 
uh, my father was uh, just, he has uh, several qualities and the m one of the best is he was very kind mm -hmm. and he respected everybody regardless of uh, their background, the status they have in the society. And uh, most importantly, he is a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he went to college uh, once he was adult, and after he started uh, his career, he went back to college and he got uh, more certificate. And after he retired, he went back to college and got a certificate. So uh, it, it just, when you see your dad do something like this, you don't want to settle for something less. You just want to uh, strive mm -hmm. for more. Yeah. So all the good values mm -hmm. that I have and uh, the good characters that I have, mm -hmm. I got that from my dad. And after retiring from uh, uh, public school, he is now teaching in a private school. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is just there is a lot to learn from dads. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, it is just uh, uh, tremendous. The impact of uh, my dad on me is uh, I, I just can't describe. Thank you very much. Well, I can also say about mine is um, my parents are still married, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. I really respected my dad because he taught us a lot of lessons, uh -huh. and I, that made me realize that if you grow up without a dad, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you be, you'll be missing on, on a lot of uh -huh. stuff. Mm -hmm. He taught you how to become a man, grow mm -hmm. up, how to groom yourself, and a whole lot of stuff that Maybe mom can teach me, mm -hmm. but dad will be able to teach me better mm -hmm. than the mm -hmm. way mom can teach me. Well, coming to this issue about fatherhood, mm -hmm. particularly in uh, America, there's a lot of problems. Yes. <laughs> because uh, the majority of children yes. do not uh, have, have a father. father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have a father who gave birth to them yes. biologically, yes. Mm -hmm. but they don't have someone yes. in their life when they were growing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, brings a problem like drug and alcohol, yes. mm -hmm. and also majority of people who are not brought up by their dad in their house, mm -hmm. I mean the household, mostly drop out from school. Mm -hmm. And there's also another uh, problem that they suffer emotionally. Yes. Mm -hmm by growing up and also uh, particularly the boys. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they are more likely to be involved in crime yes. and um, the ladies are more likely to get pregnant mm -hmm. in their early age. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let's see, um, I believe both of you have children. Yes, yes we do. Mm -hmm. yeah, so how are you guys helping the kids? Um, even though I have a daughter, mm -hmm. uh, my father was very active in my daughter's life. Her father um, was not active in, in, in her life. And I talked to him at the beginning when she was born that um, I was a daddy's girl. She's mm -hmm. going to be a daddy's girl. I'm going to be very important. So he chose not to uh, have an active role in her life. But my father was alive until my daughter was set. Mm -hmm. So to me, that gave a good foundation. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I have um, always involved in church. So mm -hmm. there was always strong men mm -hmm. in church that took an active role in her mm -hmm. and they would speak to her and show her. I have uncles, I have brothers that they stepped in. So um, one of the things I talked to my uh, daughter about at a young age and just like my father was that um, the best thing I can do for her is to teach her everything I know. Mm -hmm. So whether you're a father or mother, you have to spend time with your children. Mm -hmm. You have to spend quality time with your children. You have to um, not be afraid to say, I'm sorry. Not be afraid to admit that I was wrong, that I made a mistake. I needed to let her know that I was human. I needed to open up the doors of communication because when she got older, I wanted her to come to me. 
talked to me about things that were important. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so I think my father and my mother set that tone. Mm -hmm. um, also, my father taught us responsibilities and how to work. Mm -hmm. We had chores and we had to work. Mm -hmm. And in America, I didn't know we were poor, but I think looking back when one was, was lacking, my father did 30 years at Kodak and he retired. Uh -huh. And, but he wasn't ashamed, he would go out and pick apples mm -hmm. and pick cherries mm -hmm. and he would take us. And even though we might have thought it was a game, we had to, you know, mm -hmm. help too. So um, F, I think it takes that village. Mm -hmm. It takes a village mm -hmm. to raise mm -hmm. um, a child. So, so those fathers and those men, um, like I said, a lot of them stepped in to my daughter's life and kind of fill that gap. So mm -hmm. I think it's a blessing very lucky. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, what do you guys think is the problem where majority of uh, the children in America are raised by a single parent, like only mom? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think is the problem? Mm, well, um, maybe there are uh, lots of factors uh, to the problem. Uh, uh, when the uh, children are, are mainly a reflection of the, the parents, their parents, and the reflection of the society. If we value uh, uh, family, and if they were raised by, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the parents of the children now who uh, do not have both parents in their lives, they might have not uh, a strong family in the first place. Right. So they don't value yes. uh, family. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I'm concerned, we build uh, the building block of society is family. Yes. We build yes. society family by family. Yes. When there is a breakdown in family, mm -hmm when we don't appreciate mm -hmm. uh, a strong family, when we don't support family, we are breaking down the society. Yes. So they are a reflection of the previous generation who do not value strong family uh, relationship. Uh, and the breakdown, if uh, the other, I think most uh, important thing uh, for the breakdown, I believe, is we are becoming self-centered yes. individuals. Oh, yes. That yes. is the problem. Yes. When you yes. live with uh, someone else, mm -hmm. you have to think about the other yes. person. Mm -hmm. You have to think about what both of you yes. can sacrifice mm -hmm. to maintain the relationship mm -hmm. and raise the children. Yes. But these days, we are so self-centered. Yes. When our interests are not met, yes. we tend to just get out of the relationship. Yes. Uh, I remember, so, okay, mm -hmm. sorry, yeah. I remember okay. one, uh, going that one thing my mother um, taught me um, as I was getting married. And that was, um, we, as a society, we don't make a commitment. Uh -huh. We're not making commitments. Like my parents got married and stayed married, your parents, mm -hmm. your parents. And so now it's so easy to get divorced uh -huh. and, and to walk that is away, true. you know. Um, one thing I would like to say to um, single women who are raising children, one thing I never did, I never said that I'm mother and father. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm your mother. I was mm -hmm. her mother. I, can't, I couldn't be the father. That's a very you know? important and, and a lot of times I hear in society I'm mother and father. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. And another thing I would like to say to young, young women, um, who father, their father's not, uh, children's father not in their life is at all costs, no matter if you're angry at them or whatever's going on, please leave the door open. Mm -hmm. I've always left the door open that so good. that her father, that I never said anything mm -hmm. negative about her dad mm -hmm. to her. And I always tried to leave that door open that mm -hmm. if he wanted to have a mm -hmm. relationship with mm -hmm. And I encouraged that all along the way. My daughter's 27 now along the way to, to um, if you want to talk to her, if you want to see her, and you know, uh, when she said, Mom, I want to see my dad, I would go find her, you know, and, and I would encourage them mm -hmm. to have to spend some time together. Mm -hmm. So I encourage young women to please 
please leave that door open mm -hmm. and let mm -hmm. those fathers in because mm -hmm. it is so important, like I said, not only to boys, mm -hmm. but also to girls. Well, that is a very important uh, issue because some of the women in our society today, they use the children yes. as a like a, a machinery mm -hmm. to yes, control the men. Yes, mm -hmm. They say, oh, you're not going to be with me? Mm -hmm. Then you're not going to see your child. That's it, that's mm -hmm. I have a friend who has four kids now. And one of the boys is out of control. Mm -hmm. Why? Because um, she kept the children away from their dad. Mm -hmm. And the relationship didn't work. Mm -hmm. So since the relationship didn't work, right. she took the guy to court. Mm -hmm. And luckily on her side, she won the case. Mm -hmm. So they gave her full custody. Mm -hmm. And most women use that word full custody yes. to control men. And they will tell you, you're not going to see your child. Yes. All they care about is child support. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think child support is something that is really good mm -hmm. in a system because sometimes some of the dads don't want to do, pay attention to their responsibilities. Right. Mm -hmm. You brought a child to this world, yes. make sure you take care of the child. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But some fathers don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And there are fathers who are willing yes to take care of their children. Mm -hmm. And it's so surprising that those who take care of their responsibilities, yes. they are those who are not able to see their kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I meet a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I talk to them and they, some of the, a lot of the men in America who pay child support, a lot of them cry. Yes. Because mm -hmm. they said, I pay child support, yes. but I can't see my kids. Yes. That is one thing I think, um, the system needs to take a look at yes. mm -hmm. because majority of the children, if they don't have a father, mm -hmm. research that we're going to talk about later yes. and show you the figures, yes. proves that it's yes. really yes. affecting the children. But we have mm -hmm. to remember that it, it took uh, a mother and a father, okay, mm -hmm. an egg and a sperm, as we could say. And, and, and the women have to realize that 50% of that child makeup mm -hmm. is from the father mm -hmm. and the other half is from the mother. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when that child is having problems or cutting up or this and that, it's, it's gonna be that father mm -hmm. that reaches that child. So again, I beg you women, please do not. Mm -hmm. You know, please, please, whatever is going on, whatever issue, however mad you is, always remember it is not about you. Good. It is about that child. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is about the welfare for that child. It is about, um, making sure that your child grows up to be a functioning member of society, society. Mm -hmm. and that it has everything mm -hmm. that it needs to make it. And what you can do is, you might be angry, you might be upset. I was upset sometimes, but I thank God I learned self-control and self-respect. Mm -hmm. And I learned that it wasn't about me, mm -hmm. it was about my daughter. And that's one thing I said to her father when she was an infant. It's not about you or me. It is about this little girl. Do you think uh, uh, the call system is contributing to the problem? The cost? The yeah. call mm -hmm. system. Oh, the court. Well, sometimes it's not fair, but... Uh, I, I think we should spend uh, a lot of energy and time in making the uh, family function by itself. And instead mm -hmm. of focusing on what to do mm -hmm. after a breakdown, right. how do we just keep the family intact? Yeah. How do we uh, keep family stronger? Mm -hmm. How do we make the family mm -hmm. raise good children? Mm -hmm. How do we put good value yeah. in the minds of the yeah. young people and the children? Mm -hmm. I, I think we have to uh, invest uh, our uh, energy in there and instead of uh, the court system or the child uh, mm -hmm. care system. Uh, I think we, there is a lack of uh, 
giving enough value to uh, family, yes. uh, enough support for uh, family. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is where the problem is and uh, the focus uh, should be. You know, the cycle can be broken. We can, we can break the cycle. How? And one of the reasons, like, say for example, there is a young man and he you know, is a father. And his father was not uh -huh. uh, a part of his life. He can consciously make a decision mm -hmm. and do things to say that I'm going to be better mm -hmm. than what my father was. I'm going to be a part of my son or my daughter's mm -hmm. life. We have to break the cycle, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's an individual thing. So I, I plead, um, young men, if you have children, like I used to do my daughter, you need a mommy day? I can tell when things weren't quite right with mm -hmm. her. Do you need a mommy day? Mm -hmm. And yes, that means she, she needs some time with me. Mm -hmm. So do you need a father's day? Yes. Mm -hmm. Spend time with your children. It might be difficult, but, uh, and again, we talk about the court system. Mm -hmm. Fathers have rights too. So even though you're ordered to pay child support, which it, we shouldn't have to make you pay to take care of your children, but <laughs> if, if that's the case, then guess what? You can go back to the court and petition your court for visitation. Mm -hmm. and for time to spend with your children. Yeah, you can do that. And yeah, that is true. Well, let's see. Uh, we have a video clip that is 001. So we're going to see if we'll be able to get that clip. And uh, we can take a look at it. My name is Derek. I have four boys. My son to tell you, I'm always like, clean up, do your chores, get it clean. You know, you're, you're investing, you're talking, you're teaching, you're training. As a dad, sometimes you can forget, you're just training. You're planting a seed now and you're gonna see it eight years later. I wanna make sure that I'm the father to them that I never had. So it was, I was pretty serious about being a dad. It's interesting, fear drove me in the beginning. So I was overly on everything. No candy, only drink water. You're gonna have those challenging moments, those accountability moments. You know, I'm, I'm raising babies to boys, to men. Early on, showing them what support looks like, feels like. Things go not so great, helping you recover quickly. Even though it may not seem like it, they hear you. A lot of times they'll act like they don't even know I'm there. Julian, he's a senior and I went to his football game and I was trying to get there right before the halftime so we could walk out, it was senior night. And I, I missed it. I, the traffic hit and I couldn't get there. And uh, later we talked to him and I apologized. He was like, it's okay. He's like, yeah. He's like, I kept looking up, but I didn't know where you were, I didn't see you. And just that let me know, even though they don't say thanks for coming or, you know, I'm glad you're there. They're not gonna ever say that. But, you know, hearing that lets me know like, man, things are off if I'm not there. <laughs> I want to say thank you for showing me like how to be a man through like my teenage years because I know it's been hard but thank you thank you for supporting me at my football games and throughout my life it means a lot I'd like to thank you for bringing me into this world as your son as I was getting older you're building me into a man I'd like to thank you for that you guys are becoming good men yeah you're more than welcome uh, man. Mm. Do you hear that a lot? No. There's a lot of things that I want to accomplish. Um, a lot of things that I want to do, but uh, I've always known that my biggest contribution to this world would be you. It means so much that you said that to me. Thank you very much and welcome back. Well, what did you guys, what can you say about the clip? It's beautiful. Um, one thing that, that kept sticking out in my mind is um, we invest in our children. Mm -hmm. We invest in the future. Mm -hmm. you know? So sometimes don't worry about the money. I know as a mm -hmm. single parent, I made a lot of sacrifices. But sometimes I want to say, you know, not to her, but you know, I'm just spending this. 
But I, 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 I changed my way of thinking, and that was, she's an investment. I'm investing in <coughs> And one thing that uh, struck me is when he said, uh, I want to be the dad yeah. or the father yeah. that uh, I wish I had. Yes. I think in everything we do, uh, we should uh, keep that in mind yeah. uh, as a father. Yeah. Not only as a father, as a husband, mm -hmm. we should just be the best. Yeah. Uh, as a neighbor, we yeah. should be the best. Yeah. As a co-worker, we should be the best. Yes. Whatever our role is, yeah. we just have to be the, the person that we wish mm -hmm. we had in that position. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that is a great point. If we are out there and you are not in your child's life, yes. you got to do something. Yes. Because yes. we brought these kids to this world. Yes. And it's our responsibility mm -hmm. to raise them. It might be that you did not get a, ch a father yes. mm -hmm. to raise you. Yeah. That doesn't mean you don't have to care about your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Can we make a change? Yes. Let's try our best yes. as we can, we can to break that cycle. Break cycle. Let's say yes. your dad didn't take care of you, mm -hmm. so you're not going to take care of your child? No. Mm -hmm. I think it's time that we need to break the cycle. Yes. And just as we said, um, if the mother of the Darius did not permit him mm -hmm. to be in the kid's life. Mm -hmm. Do you, the kids won't say this. Mm -hmm. You you can see that the father is really imparting a lot of knowledge yeah, to the not. kid. Yes. And um, when I watched it, I was really touched by it. Yeah. Well, there's another clip by Jeffrey, and uh, that is zero zero two clip. Let's see, Jeffrey is also touchy. <laughs> so let's try and uh, watch Jeffrey's uh, clip and let's see what happened. I have three daughters. Sydney is six years old. Layla will be five years old. And Charlie is seven months old. Oh my gosh, I, was, I became a dad at the ripe age of 19. My uh, college sweetheart, who is now my wife, we don't have a lot of outside help, so we heavily depend on each other. I work at night, she works during the day. My wife has to get up earlier for work because her commute is longer. I get the girls ready and take them to school, take care of whatever needs to be taken care of at home, picking up shifts, so leave for work about 2.30, 3 o'clock, get home about midnight, uh, wake up and do the same thing. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. It is a puzzle. It's an unsolvable puzzle. <laughs> My girls like to dance <laughs> a lot, and so if I get up and do any type of dance with them, which I always do, that makes them laugh a lot. Uh, you get accustomed to being able to function off of a short amount of sleep. A full eight, it's been a while. Break time, breaks, you get a break. I try to look at everything that they do as an opening to teach them a lesson, everything that they say. And I always question myself immediately, right? Was I too hard? Because I'm the only Man, I don't want them to ever have an idea that I can't talk to dad because dad is like, you know, dad, dad is scary. This is a real, a real fear that you, you have. And I'm not saying it's like a fear every day. Kind of a fear every day. <laughs> I mean, you know, think about it. I, what, I, what I mean by that is I think about it daily. every time and I love the fun things that we do together. I love the fun things that we too do. <laughs> ah, man, y'all messing me up here. I love you too, baby. I love the fun things we do too. I love you, Daddy, because um, we, we just have fun. Um, we just go in the park together. We just play Legos and I, I love you. Thank you for coming. You surprised me. <laughs> you surprised me. When, when we go home, we all, we all, my daddy turns on the music and we all dance. And then we start having a dance party and it's super fun. Mm -hmm.